One of the features that is often missing in visual scripting is the idea of return values, and Bolt is no exception to this. Return values are frequently used in text-based scripting and can be very useful in making easy to read, easy to maintain, and easy to expand code. So in this video, I'm going to use super units and custom events and Bolt visual scripting to create return values. What this means is not only can custom events be used to call code on a different flow graph, that second flow graph can respond by sending something back to the original flow graph. That something could be a number, a string, a game object, or any variable or object type. This can be extremely useful and make something like an object pooling solution far easier to create. This video will be building on my last two videos, which covered super units and custom events. If you missed those videos, check the link in the top right or the video description below. I want to give a quick preview of what I'll be creating. There's not a lot to build in the big scheme of things, but understanding the concepts and the purpose is a bit trickier than the actual building of the code. I'll be building three super units. The first is the function call super unit, which is going to trigger a custom event on a flow graph and then wait for a response from that second flow graph. The second unit is the function event super unit, which contains the custom event. This unit will start the flow like other events in Bolt. The last unit is the function return super unit, which has a flow input and an object input. The unit will use a custom event to send the object back to the original function call super unit. This function will allow the developer to create their own custom code between the function event and the function return units. The idea is to make these units as generic as possible. Just like in C Sharp or other text-based code, input parameters can be sent to the function. And that's not too difficult to implement, and I'll be covering that in an additional video. So if that sounds useful, let's get started. I'm going to create a new flow macro in my super unit folder and call it function call. The first thing I'm going to add is an input, since this flow macro will be a super unit. This input will need a control input, and I'll call it enter. It will also need two value inputs. The first will be a string, and this is the name of the event or function that the unit will be calling. I'll call the variable event, and I'll also check the box for has default value, as this will allow the user of the super unit to type the name of the event directly into the unit, rather than needing a separate string literal unit. The second value input will be the game object that has the event. I'll name this object, and it will be of type game object. Next, I'll add a trigger custom event unit and connect the event and object nodes from the input. These tell the trigger what event is being triggered and what game object the event is on. I'm going to add two more arguments to the trigger. These are going to be used for the return event so that it knows where to send the return value back to. In order to send a value back, I'll be using a custom event, which means I need an event name and a game object. In this case, the event name needs to be unique because I want to trigger an event within a particular super unit and not on every super unit of this type. There may be an easier way to do this, but I want to show you how I create unique names. Getting a unique name is going to take a little work and the addition of a new variable type. Thankfully, C-sharp has a built-in type just for this purpose. It's called a GUID, which stands for Globally Unique Identifier. This identifier is created based on the time and the date that the instance was created. This makes it nearly impossible for a duplicate ID to occur. To add this variable type, I'm going to go up to the Tools menu, then to Bolt, then Unit Options Wizard. When the window pops up, I'll scroll to the bottom of the assembly types and press Next to go to the Variable Types tab. Here I'll press the plus at the bottom of the window and then clicking on No Type, I'll search for GUID. And with that, I'll push Generate and let Bolt do its thing of rebuilding the units. And this can take a few minutes. The next step is to create the GUID. My first attempt to create the GUID for the super unit involved the use of a start event, but this caused race conditions and throwing an error depending on what start event got called first. So, what I've done instead is to create a variable named GUID, and I've left the type as null. The type will be assigned later when we assign the value in the flow macro. Then when entering the function call super unit, I can check if the GUID variable is null with a null check. If the variable is not null, then I can direct the flow to the trigger custom event unit and all is good. Now while I'm down here, I'll also get a copy of the get variable unit and drag its output into the first argument of the trigger custom event unit. Now back up to the null check, if the variable is null, then I need to create a GUID. Dragging out the null flow from the null check, I can search for GUID and there are a lot of options here. It's tempting to think that I need some type of new GUID command, but what I really need is guid.newguid. This calls a function that both creates and initializes the new guid. With that done, I'll then convert the guid to a string 
since the identifier will function as the event name, which happen to be strings. I'll also drag in a set variable unit to save the value of the GUID. This way, the next time the super unit is called, the GUID will not be null. I'll also connect the flow from the set variable unit to the trigger custom event unit. And that's all that needs to happen to call the function. But there's still no ability to receive the return value. That will happen with another custom event. So I'll add a custom event unit and connect the get variable for the GUID to the event name. I'll also change the number of arguments from zero to one. This argument will be the returned value. To make use of this return value, I need to add an output unit. This unit will need a control output that I'll call exit. It will also need a value output for the return type. The type needs to be set as object, which allows all types of variables to be passed. And of course, I forgot one important step. I forgot the last argument of the trigger custom event unit. This needs to be set to self as that is the game object that the return argument will be coming back to. And with that, we're finished with the function called superunit, which is by far the most complex of the three superunits. So take a deep breath and let's dive into the next superunit, which I'm calling function event. This superunit will contain the event called by the function call unit and will store information for the return value. It's gonna be a relatively simple flow macro. In the flow macro, I'll add an input unit. And in this case, it will only need a value input which I'll name event and will be of type string. I'll also make sure to toggle has default value. I'll then add a custom event unit and connect the event input string to the event name node. This event has two incoming arguments, so I'll increase the number of arguments from zero to two. These arguments contain the information of where to send the return value. So I'll create two set variable flow graph units to store the info for use later along the flow. Now, if you haven't used them before, Flow variables are local variables in that they only exist for as long as the flow continues, which in this case is exactly what we need. It's worth noting that flow variables are created by units and not in the variables window. The first flow variable I'll call event name, which will contain the GUID. The second flow variable I'll call object name and will contain the game object that is going to receive the return value. The last step is to add an output unit. This unit only has a control output and I'll call it exit. And that completes the second super unit. So on to the third and final super unit. I'll create another flow macro and call it function return. This super unit will need an input unit with both a control input that I'll call enter and a value input that I'll call return and will be of type object. I'll add a trigger custom event unit and connect the flow from the input unit. Next, I'll add a get variable unit, making sure to select the flow variable option. I'll type in the variable name of event name and connect it to the custom trigger event unit. I'll repeat this for the object name flow variable as well. The last thing that needs to happen is to change the number of arguments in the trigger custom event unit from zero to one, and then connect the return object in the input unit to the argument node. And there you go, that's all it takes. In this case, there's no output needed. With all that done, I wanna create a simple example of how these super units can get used. This example will return a string that will be printed to the console. So once again, a little silly, but it shows the functionality. So in a new flow macro, I'll drag in the three super units I just created. Notice that the function call and the function event are green, indicating that they have events inside. I'll add a start event and connect it to the function call super unit. In the function call super unit, I'll type in the name test for the name of the event. In this case, since all the units are on the same game object and the same flow macro, the object will be self. Then I'll connect the flow from the function event to the function return super unit. I'll also add a string literal unit and connect it to the return value. I'll type in hello world as a value for the string. Now back up to the function call, I'll drag out the flow and search for debug log, which allows a string to be displayed in the console. The return value of the function call can then be connected to the debug unit. Pushing play, I can see that hello world is displayed in the console as expected. So there you go. We've created three super units that allow return values in bold visual scripting. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, input parameters can also be sent, but this video is running a bit long, so I'll be looking at that in the next video. If you found this video useful or helpful, please think about hitting the subscribe and like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.